Well, I think the first thing to realise with things like the Kindle and other ebook readers is that they were designed so that the user had control over the way things appeared. I'm going to help Sean out here with his uh, little baby camera. So I've got a book open here on Meta Algorithmics and one of the things they wanted was that when you buy a book on a Kindle you could display it on a Kindle screen but also on your iPad or on your mobile phone as well. But the difference between all these is that the screen sizes are different. The problem with that is that you then have to lay out the text differently, otherwise you just end up with the small text from the Kindle and lots of white space all around it. Text that can be roughly the same size, but you can use a bigger screen and you can get more on. Or, if perhaps your eyesight's not as good, you can opt to change the font size to something slightly larger or a different font and then you get a different layout. Now it goes without saying, Steve, you can't do this with a book, with a, with a paper book, and you, ca you can't do this with a PDF? Originally when books were first invented, they'd be putting metal type in exactly the right place and various stages that Dave's been through previously. So they could fine tune it? Exactly, they can fine tune it. They can think, let's move them around slightly so it looks easier, it's nicer to read. And the PDF is exactly the same. So this is just a standard academic paper. And so the first thing you notice is there's two columns. But what's actually happening here is this PDF is just saying inside, put the letter T there at that position on the page, put the letter H there at that position on the page. So if I were to make the thing bigger, the only thing we can do is zoom in or zoom out. So the text is now bigger, but it no longer fits the whole page on there. I mean, you're not telling me that every single PDF I ever read, like this one here, the person who wrote it sat there and made all these decisions. I mean, surely when this was written on a word processor or wherever it was first mm -hmm. written, there were computers and algorithms involved in laying this out too, weren't there? Oh, ab absolutely. This was probably written in either something like Microsoft Word or LaTeX. When they were writing it, the software they were using would be making these decisions. So they're making exactly the same decisions that a, a typesetter would have done by hand originally is now being done on the computer. And actually the Kindle's got to make exactly the same decisions. So why can't the Kindle do what Microsoft Word did when this PDF was first made? What's, what's the Kindle doing wrong? Well, the Kindle's not necessarily doing anything wrong. It's just that they've had to make slightly different decisions for a device like the Kindle than they've had to make for Microsoft Word. One of the advantages that Microsoft Word has is that when you're typing in the document and creating it, you have to press the keys and there is a time delay between you pressing each key so it can make decisions while you're typing as you're going so it can sort of hide some of the calculations whereas when you turn the Kindle on and open it you want to display it as soon as you turn the page you want the next page there you don't want to have to wait and see all the text scrolling across as it lays it out. One of the terms that is used when we lay out text we flow it into a column so we put the text like water flowing into a thing we flow the text into the column so when we relay it out based on different font size or different screen size we're reflowing it to fit a different size. Every time I say, oh no, I'm not happy with that point size, or I want to change an orientation, yep. or I even turn a page, a reflow happens. Yes, it's having to rework out where every line ends, where every line begins, where everything appears on the page. And because we are impatient people mm -hmm. these days, this has to happen nearly Instantly. immediately. Yeah, absolutely. I would have thought in this day and age, with such advanced technology around us, something as simple mm -hmm. as laying out text or reflowing text would be an instant process anyway. This would be a very easy thing for a device to do. Let's turn you into a computer and let's make you lay out some text and see how easy it is to do. I'm not sure I would be the uh, recommended computer for something, but yeah, I think we're going... Well, I think you're probably about the same sort of level as a Kindle or <laughs> something. So I've got some tiles, and I'm going to get you to lay out a line of text on this using these tiles. The line length is between the... Between the two sets of holes. So I want you to lay out across here, this line has insufficient length. So do you want me to take the camera and I'll... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And you want me to start here? Yeah. Okay. This line. We're definitely going to need a bit of time lapse here. Oh, see, look what you've done to me. I can already see my first problem arising here. Insufficient. Insuff. What have you done to me? All right. The word insufficient isn't going to fit there. So I have a choice here, obviously. So what I suggest we do is we start off with just a ragged right, as it would be called, or left justified okay, so I would, text. So I would take the insufficient yep. and I'd bring it down here. Insufficient, I-C-I, -I, is that right? Yep, I yeah, believe so. Insufficient. 
Yep. Hopefully you haven't done it to me again here. You, you cheeky. Look what you've done to me. Yep. Length, unfortunately, also has to move all the way down to there. And I've got a lot of blank space here. Yep. I think you pre-planned this. Oh, absolutely. We knew. <laughs> and you've left me with a lot of uh, blank space there because of the words you chose. So you've been following a set of simple rules, which is what something like the Kindle will do to a greater or lesser extent. It might be slightly more complicated. But what we've ended up with is probably about a third of the page is not being used. And we've also ended up with what we would class as a widow on the last line. So what we really want is an algorithm that keeps everything balanced so it looks nicer and then it's easier to read. Yes. So there's things we could do for that. So for example, you had the problem if I move length back up here, because you were allowing a tile's worth of space, it didn't fit on. So what you could have done is reduce the amount of space slightly. If we were using a, what's called a proportionally spaced font, where certain letters are smaller than others. So for example, the I here is taking up exactly the same amount of space as the letter C. So if we had a smaller I, you'd be able to get everything in. What we're using here is essentially a mono space. That's right, font, yeah. Isn't it? Squash the E up onto the I. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. If we could do this, there we Yeah, go. there we are. So if I'm changing the gaps here, what the computer wants to do to get a really nice layout is to be able to make different decisions. And so it could either break it straight after and leave it with a big gap, or you can say, well, actually, I can squeeze that up a bit. This is an obvious trick. Are there any more yep. tricks of the trade that can be done? Well, perhaps one thing that is even slightly counterintuitive is if we put this back to where we were before, imagine that there was more text at the beginning of here. So we can't get insufficient on here, and so we've broken there. But if we broke earlier, we could push insufficient on there and then move has down I'm with you. Yeah. a line earlier and if we had some more text beforehand we've got the word that was hypothetically before oh, yeah. has now flowed in here we've now got a sentence that looks rather more balanced than we had before so what the computer has to do if it's going to do a really nice layout all the possible break points it can be, it can say i want to break the line at this point or at this point or at this point or at this point or at this point. A bit like a sat-nav deciding which, where it's going to exactly. turn left and right. And it, has, to, yeah. and it has to consider all the possible ones. So is it going to break line one after this or after this? And if it breaks line one after this, where is it going to break for line, the end of line two? Is it after there or there or there or there? And so if you do the maths, in this case we've got six words. That means there's two to the six possible documents we could make. I would imagine there are a lot of obvious redundant ones exactly. that we can get rid of. Yeah. So. It still strikes me as something that a computer, if told the rules, yep. should be able to do really quickly. It still seems easy, like it was hard for me, because I'm dumb, <laughs> but it seems to me a computer, if you've programmed it and said, I never want one of these, I never want you to do that, I always want you to do that. The problem for the computer, and for, particularly for devices like the Kindle, is that they're battery powered, and the CPUs on them aren't that powerful. To keep them cheap. To keep them cheap, yeah, to make them affordable. And they don't need to be anymore. So what you can do, there, there are algorithms, and we'll do another video showing exactly how probably one of the most famous ones by Don Knuth works to break text, that do really nice jobs. The problem is that they have to do lots of calculations. And if you do lots of calculations, you have to expend energy. And the last thing you want when you're reading a murder mystery novel is to, your battery runs out just as you find out who Darcy Sato's killed. The reason the Kindle does a kind of lazy layout and will sometimes leave widows and sometimes give yep. us these big gaps is because it's using a very efficient algorithm exactly, that yeah. won't waste battery. So yeah, they've decided to take an algorithm that does a good enough job but trades off more battery life for really nice typesetting. If they brought out a Kindle tomorrow with a big fat battery mm -hmm. and, a, and a better CPU in it, they could quite easily make a Kindle that did a much better job of layout. Absolutely, yes. I mean, the algorithms exist. Things like LaTeX, which mathematicians and computer scientists and scientists have used for decades to typeset their papers, can do really nice jobs at laying out a document. But if you actually run LaTeX, then you'll see it actually takes a significant amount of time, even on a normal machine, to lay out the document. And you don't want to wait that every time you turn the page or change the font size on your Kindle. You just want to be able to read from page to page to page. Steve, there's one thing we haven't done yet that I'm sure all the viewers are going to be screaming at the screen. <laughs> what about yeah. doing this? Putting a in hyphen. a hyphen. Where would the hyphen go? Down the side? Maybe